Today in this video I'm going to be testing two different types of plant nutrients in hydroponics in a less traditional way. Now in a previous video series, which was a five part series, I tested both of these two different types of nutrients, the Maxi Grow and the Maxi Bloom, using two different types of plants. One was strictly a flowering plant, one was a produce producing plant, which was peppers. And in that video series what I did was I, I grew one set of plants in the Maxi Grow through the entire grow, and another set of plants in the Maxi, grew, Maxi Bloom through the entire grow. And then in another part of those same videos, I grew max, both of the plants, all the plants in Maxi Grow, and then I switched half the plants over to the Maxi Bloom uh, for, the veg for the produce stage or the flowering stage. You can watch that video series. The link will be in the description below or at the end of the video. And in this video, what I'm going to be doing is growing uh, one set of plants in just the Maxi Grow, which is the, what I actually prefer to just grow in all at once anyways. But then I'm going to be taking both of these, combining these together, 50-50, so we're going to have, uh, I would say, a more general purpose plant food. Now all that's going to do is going to average out these numbers. So it's going to be a 7.5-10-14 instead of a 10-5-14 or 5-15-14. So it's going to average them out. Everything else that's in here, the micronutrients, which you see on the back here in these percentages, they all are basically identical between these two. The only difference is the macronutrients, which is the NPK. Now, in this video, I'm going to be growing something I've never grown before, and that is the Carolina Reaper. I've actually bought these seeds uh, a couple of years ago. I never got around to, around to actually growing them in an experiment because I've been busy with other experiments. But these are going to be interesting to grow because if you look on here, the germination rate is a 14 to 35 days. So I got to get these started. And... If you also notice here, the temperature is also important. So I've never grown the Carolina beer. I've grown other peppers, um, but you can see the temperature right there, 80 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit in order to get them to germinate. So if I was to just plant them in my basement here where it's colder, these would probably either not germinate or they would take a very, very long time to do so. So I will be using a heat map. And at the end of this video, I will be actually tasting the Carolina Reaper. Now, I'm not gonna put the whole pepper in my mouth, just forewarning, it's going to be a small taste, so it's not going to be that kind of video. I'm not going to torture myself. Uh, anyways, so we're going to go ahead and get along with this, this experiment, and uh, we'll see what happens. All right, I got the seeds all set up in their highly sophisticated germination incubation chamber, which is just a take-home food container from a restaurant. Uh, just some holes are poked in it here, and it is basically sealed. And it's just sitting on top of this heat mat here. The light is on in this grow tent right now just for video purposes. It's going to be in the dark uh, for the next couple of weeks here until they germinate. And then we'll go ahead and move them into their hydroponic setups. All right, it's only been eight days since I started these seeds here. And to my surprise, I already have a germination, at least on two seeds. And I wasn't really expecting this because the package did say 14 days minimum for germination. But peppers and these seeds don't really look much different than any other pepper seeds. The seeds typically germinate between 7 and 14 days, so it's, it's sort of surprising, sort of not surprising. Uh, I just kind of was thrown off. It's actually good that I looked at this because I wasn't even planning on checking on it this soon. As you can see here, the two seeds that are coming up are already reaching at this point because the light's been off in here. So I'm not even going to be able to use these if I'm going to be doing an experiment here. Those are going to be uh, reaching, they're going to be a lot more lanky at this point, and also they're going to be larger than the other plants because these came up first. I need all the seeds to come up at the same time so I have good subjects. And the reason why I had the light off in here is because this is rock wool and light penetrates below the rock wool a little bit and seeds don't like light and that can inhibit germination. So I did put five seeds per net pot so that I have a, a good uh, quantity to choose from. And I only have one seed left. There's only that many that came in the package. so. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let these germinate longer. I'm gonna leave the lights on now so when the new ones come up here, uh, they won't reach like these did already. So we're gonna let that go and we'll come back and see what happens. All right, it has now been 18 days since I started these seeds and more of them have germinated, not all of them. Uh, these are the first two here that came up very soon and then the rest of these came up within about the past three days, most of them about three days ago. And that is also when I turned off the heat mat as it's no longer needed. Uh, the rest of the seeds that are in these net pots, as I said, there was five per net pot, so three here, two here, three here, two here. The rest of the seeds may still germinate, but I'm not going to use them. But I have what I need here to start the experiment. So I've only been using RO water in here. Uh, seeds don't need any kind of fertilizer or nutrients or anything like that. So I put RO water in here, 
because the seeds contain everything the seedlings need for their initial stage of growth. And I didn't want them to grow fast anyways. I want them to kind of all sprout up and try to get to be about the same size without growing too fast. So that's kind of one of the tricks that I use as far as when I do these experiments, is I just use RO water to start with in most cases. So what I'm going to do now is transfer these net pots into uh, the same thing you saw in the last video, which was the uh, styrofoam sheet with the hole, uh, the two holes in it per sheet. And I'm going to use these cups here that the sheet's going to sit on top of. What this is going to allow me to do is start off with a, a lighter solution and use less of it just to get these roots uh, to grow longer so that when I put them in the larger containers, the roots will be able to go down towards the bottom. And this will allow me to do uh, nutrient change outs without wasting a lot of it. So they're just gonna sit on top of these containers right over top of this until the roots get large enough. All right, to start off, I'm gonna be using two and a half grams per gallon concentration. So that's gonna be 1.25 grams each of this for the mix and just two and a half grams of, uh, for the other two plants of the Maxi Grow. So just got my little gram scale here just to show you. It's very sensitive. This is how I measure all of my nutrients all the time. Even if I blow on it here, you probably see the number move. Mm -hmm. See that? All I did was just blow on it just a little bit. So I put the cup on there, and then I do a tear weight, start at zero. So then I just add my powder to that. Just as a little bonus tip here, I don't think I've ever actually shown this in any one of my videos. This is how I make my RO DI water. Uh, this is the RO system, and then this is the DI resin um, cartridge. And then I actually have it flowing up to just a, a modified little water dispenser here. It flows up in there, and there's a float up here that stops it automatically. One of the things I wanted to mention here, if you do use one of these systems, there's a trick to make your uh, DI beads last uh, a lot longer. And before I actually put this modification on here, you know, I wouldn't be able to get too much out of these resin beads before they're all used up. Um, because even though it's going through uh, reverse osmosis filter and, and it's highly filtered out, and there's only a few ppm coming out of there, uh, these resin beads will still get used up pretty quickly to make it zero ppm. So uh, there's a trick here to make this last a lot longer, and it's very simple. So on the output of your RO filter cartridge here, you have a wastewater line. That goes down into a drain, or you can use it for in a bucket to use for plant watering plants or whatever. But in any case, that's the output line, and you have something that is already on here that's set up. Um, I, I'm not sure, I don't remember if it came with this part here. I believe this might be a pressure reducer here or a backflow preventer. Uh, but what you do is you put a, a split on the output and then the, uh, one of the output sides goes directly past this part here. And this is a, just a, one of those quarter turn valves. Right now I actually have it flushing and that's what it does. So this way here forces the water to go up through where it would normally go through, through the DI beads and this way it bypasses it and what this is doing is allowing full pressure to be flushing through the RO filter membrane to be rinse, it rinses off the membrane basically and allows it to flush the excess built up of um, dissolved solids and everything like that. So it makes it more efficient basically. So instead of this getting too clogged up after you know a few gallons going through it, um, it's, it basically removes the clog in the filter. It's not really clogged per se, it's more or less that it's getting, it's accumulating within the membrane and then allowing this high pressure water to flow through it faster, flushes all that out. So once it's done, you do about 45 seconds to a minute when you before you actually start to use it. I turn it off like that and then it flows out normally and the pressure is now reduced and it's flowing through here slower. And that's basically now flowing up into this tank right here, very, very slowly. It's actually not even coming out yet because I just basically turned it on. So that will uh, allow it to last a lot longer. And if you, when you finish doing what you're doing, like once this fills up and stops, this will automatically shut off. This is my pressure valve here. It shows me how much pressure is going through here. Um, once it shuts off, then do another flush once it's done. And if you keep doing that, you'll this will last probably... 20 times longer than it would normally, the DI resin thing. And these, these are kind of expensive, so uh, it's just a lot easier just to do it this way rather than having to keep replacing that part. All right, I got everything all set up here. This is the Mars Hydro FCE 3000. I've been using this for the past several experiments. I really like this light. 
Um, here's what we got going on here. It's pretty much the same as I've been doing it uh, in the, the other five part series I did right before this video here. Um, you'll find a link for that playlist in the description below. But it's the same setup. The only difference right now is I'm starting off with those cups, as I said. Uh, it's just a lot easier since these plants are so tiny right now. I don't need an entire reservoir full of uh, nutrient solution. It's just a big waste. So it's easier to start it off that way once the roots grow bigger, then we'll switch over to the regular basin. I also wanted to point out from what I was just talking about in the last part of this video, um, I don't use RODI water for everything when, I, when it comes to hydroponics. I'm using tap water most of the time for all of my nutrient solutions. There's certain experiments and certain videos I've done where I've used RODI water for specific reasons and also for the reason I mentioned before, which is just starting off seed things. I just use ROD water, RODI water in um, the little tiny reservoir I had, the seedlings to start just to make sure they don't grow too fast so they all kind of grow at about the same rate once they sprout. As you can see here, that right now I've got, I got two there, two there, two there, and there's one here, unfortunately. Um, there is other seeds in here, but they just haven't come up, and it's not gonna matter at this point, even if they do, because they're not gonna be, uh, they're gonna come up too late, and the plant that's growing there is gonna be larger, amongst the other ones, it'll be too far behind. The good news is these all came up about the same time, they're all about the same size, so I'm gonna be making, or I'm gonna be choosing the rest of the plants all uh, in these other, nut pots here to match whatever this one is doing. So I'll have a choice of two for each of the other ones. So, you know, here's a small one here and a larger one here. Uh, those are smaller, about the same size as this, and there's a smaller one here, about the same size as this. So if it continues at that rate, I'll pull out the bigger ones and they'll all be about the same size. And for those of you who don't follow my channel normally, yes, I do use a PAR meter to make sure that the PAR readings are the same for each one of these, and I check that throughout the entire experiment, even though I don't always show it. All right, it's been about another week. Uh, there's one little observation I wanted to point out. And on top of that, I just wanted to show here that we do have more germination. There's, some, there's two other sprouts coming up in this net pot to where there was only one seedling before, as I've shown. Uh, there's one in the back there, and there's another one just starting to sprout over here in this one. As I said, I won't be able to use those for this experiment now because they're too far behind the other ones, um, and I will be calling those out. And once I get uh, more growth here, I will be removing the extra ones in each net pot to match so they all are about the same. And that's what I'm getting to here is that they're actually showing signs of some difference already. And over here where it's just in the maxi grow, these plants here, seedlings, they seem to be growing uh, a little bit slower, maybe, or, or just a little bit smaller anyways, versus the ones over here with the mix, uh, with the maxi grow, maxi bloom 50-50. You can see the leaves are a little bit bigger on these. And the par levels I have measured with my meter, uh, they're all identical, so it's, it's not the light level. And even in the bottom containers here, it's gonna be really hard to see on the video, um, but the roots kind of match the plant size. Uh, and I, I mean, well, that's with any case, it's not, it has nothing to do with the nutrients, but with these looking a little larger, I was looking underneath here, there is slightly more root growth here, and here you can see the roots po uh, poking down there. Um, not a lot, it's, like I said, it's hard to see on here. You can see the one in the back, I think, pretty clearly. But the one over on, the ones over on this side here at the Maxi Grow, um, I can only see there's a little bit on this green container right here. And in the side there, I, you probably won't be able to see it on the video. Um, and then what, the one in the back, the yellow cup, that one is just, just barely has a root tip sticking down. So. It is kind of showing that there is something going on here on the right side, but that could actually change as we progress through this experiment. All right, it's been about another week here, and a few days ago I removed the extra plants growing in each one of these net pots and left only the ones that were all matching with the same growth figure. You can see here these are all pretty much identical at this point, uh, both in size and growth stage. And you can even see here on the bottom in the cups that the water levels are all identical in each one of these cups here, just barely touching the bottom of the net pots. So far, the only difference I've noticed in these net pots is not actually the plants, is that you can see here that the rock wool in each one of these here is clean, except for this one over here. There's algae growing on the top of it. Not that that's really affecting the plant, 
Uh, I just found it interesting that that's the only one, none of the other ones have any algae growing on them. So I'm gonna let this go a little longer. We'll come back and update this in probably another week. All right, it has been another week and it is now time to take these out of their cups and put them in their permanent containers. And you can see here there is less water in there now as the last time. Uh, it went down probably about a half an inch on each one of these. Well, still identical. And you can see here that the roots are growing all the way down to the bottom now. So um, that was my cue to put them in the containers as the roots will be able to reach the lower parts of the container so I don't have to fill the containers up very full. So I'll be putting about three gallons in each one of the containers. I am now changing to five grams per gallon concentration of these powders. So there is 15 grams to make three gallons of solution. This is just the Maxi Grow. And then in the other container, there is going to be two and a half grams of that and two and a half grams of the Maxi Bloom. All right, they are now in their respective containers. And I think I'm actually going to add one more gallon of solution. The roots are in there, they're in the water, but I want a little more of them immersed. Um, the rest of those up there are probably gonna turn into more air roots, um, but some of them are probably gonna end up self pruning uh, since the humidity in there is not gonna be all that high. If we were doing a uh, aeroponic type setup or fog ponics, that wouldn't be a problem at all. There'd be plenty of moisture floating around in the air. But I think in this case, I'm just gonna add a little more water and then whatever self prunes is just fine because I want air roots to get this to start growing faster. Because as of right now, this is taking quite a while as it would normally take with any pepper plant, uh, usually slow to start, but um, if we were to put these in, as I said, an aeroponic setup, they would actually grow a lot faster. But if I get more air roots to grow, being out of solution, that should uh, get more oxygen to the roots and start to help the growth accelerate. All right, it's only been four days since I put these in their containers, and there's just a little bit more growth going on here with the leaves, you can see a little bit more. But mainly here, I wanted to show the, uh, the roots. So you can see underneath here, you can see there's a lot more air roots growing now. Uh, you can see all the roots that used to be underwater now have a lot of fuzziness on them. That's the air roots to absorb oxygen. And uh, there's not a lot of uh, extra root growth that's actually submersed in the water there. But mainly I just wanted to show the air roots and you can see the same thing over here on this side. A lot more fuzzies growing there. So we'll be well underway here to um, uh, more accelerated growth pretty soon once these start to establish uh, in the next couple of days here. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here was there was a, you can probably, you probably already saw it there back. There's a little bit of algae that was growing on those roots when it was in the cup. I believe that was the yellow cup that that one was in, uh, which has the most algae growth. But this one here up front was in the green cup and that one had the algae growth on top that I was showing earlier uh, on top of the rock hole why the one over there in the back didn't have any on top but it had in underneath. Um, I guess it's kind of interesting how the wavelengths of light they're blocked out and filtered and the yellow wavelengths uh, in that part of the spectrum I guess were uh, encouraging more algae growth in the solution. But that's okay because pretty much all hydroponic solutions uh, have an algicide in there so that will be a non-issue once these roots start growing. All right, it's been another week and they aren't growing all that fast, but they are still growing and that's to be expected because anytime you switch a plant from its environment to another environment, which is kind of what I did here when I put these in the containers, they typically take a little while to acclimate to the newer conditions. And in the case of hydroponics, especially when you're changing the solutions and everything and changing how much of the roots are immersed in the water, that all affects the plant growth and it has to kind of readapt. So you can see they have grown a little bit, just not a lot yet. Uh, they will eventually take off here. And you can see here, this seems to always happen when uh, growing plants in you know sets of four like this. These two plants here and this plant here in the back, they're pretty much all the same exact size. And then the one in the front here is growing just a little bit slower or it's a little bit smaller. Uh, that has nothing to do with the plant itself, I don't believe. Uh, I believe it had something more to do with the amount of roots that were immersed in the water when I moved these to the container. Uh, I think this one simply had a little bit less, so it's just a little bit behind the other ones. Uh, I don't think it's actually growing uh, slower necessarily, it's just getting um, less nutrients. Uh, so by that I mean it's not a genetic thing. Um, 
we may see that pick up a little later on once the roots start to grow a little bit more, but that seems to be the issue here. You can see when you look at the roots down in here, you can see that those roots are a little bit smaller than the ones in the back because it's a smaller plant. That's just how it happens. Um, but over here in the other one, you can see they're pretty much about the same. You can see there's the original algae that was growing on the first roots back there, and it, it's not actually inhibiting the growth of that plant whatsoever. Um, but I wanted to make this update here to kind of show what's going on. Uh, the plants here, I want to top all of these to keep these shorter and bushier so they don't grow too tall. Although it's kind of interesting how these pe uh, pepper plants in particular are growing in that their node spacing is so close together. Uh, normally I'd see a more reaching on pepper plants and you know I, I typically grow all my pepper plants with under the same amount of light intensity uh, using my power meter so I know how much light they're getting and uh, these plants here are not uh, being affected not being suppressed in growth by the light itself that's just how they are growing so I kind of find that interesting so they may already be short uh, plants as it is just because their node spacing is so tight together there but I didn't want to top these yet because they're taking a while to acclimate to the new conditions as I've explained here uh, but once they start showing signs of growing faster again or growing more I will uh, just nip the tip so to speak so that's it for this little update here we'll come back when something else changes you know I think I know what's been contributing to these plants growing slower than normal and at least in part I forgot to turn the exhaust fan on for these tents there's my six inch I believe that's from Terra Bloom I always run it on the lowest setting but I had it off completely for past several weeks while I was getting these started from seed uh, because I needed the temperatures to be at a certain level in, in my basement. It's it's hard to maintain that. So I close up a tent and I put the light on there and the light's enough to, and the heat mat, and that's enough to get them up to the proper temperature. But once the plants start growing, uh, I don't need to worry about that. That's mostly just for germination. And I forgot to turn the fan on, so I'm not getting any inflow of air. So the plants are not getting uh, a, f a constant fresh supply of CO2. So, you know, the tent is a closed environment and then the plants are in there uh, creating oxygen and they're getting, uh, the CO2 levels are probably dropping. I can't confirm that, but without airflow in a tent, it's not getting a fresh supply of air. And that's very important, especially when plants are larger because that has to do with humidity as well. And that's, you know, humidity levels can be a problem when the plants get big. So anyways, yeah, I, I wanted to mention that. I completely forgot about it. So we'll see what happens if they start growing faster now. All right, it's only been three days since I turned on the exhaust for the tent, and I would go as far to say that, that these plants have doubled in size, or almost doubled in size in the past three days. That's uh, pretty interesting. I can't totally confirm that. That might be another experiment for another video, comparing airflow versus no airflow. Uh, but you can totally see they're growing. You know, this whole top part here, that much on all of these is new or at least it's expanding. And you can even see the roots here, They're like the one in the front, clearly the roots have uh, branched off a lot more. They look a lot more uh, thick and dense. Same thing with those on that side. There's a little bit of algae in there. It's not too bad though. That's relatively normal. Anyways, I just wanted to make a little update there to kind of show that, I thought that was interesting. All right, it's been another five days since the last segment of this video and you can see the plants here appear to have doubled in size again. Uh, since the last time, but I wouldn't say they really gained a lot more leaves. It's more like the plants are actually just expanding, uh, more cell expansion. So the leaves are getting larger, uh, the stems are uh, growing taller or, or expanding upwards. So the node spacing looks like it's actually stretched out and the stems have thickened. So at this point, these are showing enough growth vigor. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to nip the tip. Um, I don't really remember what the actual cropping method is called. I think it might be called fimming or something like that. Uh, or basically I just kind of pinch off just the very tip of this to uh, stop the upward growth of the plants. And then all of these little uh, nodules here will start growing new stems and then it'll, it'll bush out rather than trying to grow up tall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'll come back and show what I did. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna show you on video what I'm doing here. So the very tip right here where these where there is a, a stem coming out between these two top leaves right here. I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna pinch it off with my fingernails. It comes right off very easy. No need to use scissors or anything. And now there will be no more upward growth from that tip and it's going to trigger 
uh, all of the little nodules down there to grow and it'll bush out. So I'll do the rest of these and kind of show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, here is all of the little tops here. And this is kind of a, a lower stress way to train the plants or to crop them. Uh, that's basically what fimming is right there. So this is what kind of what it looks like. You can see there, every single one of these plants did the exact same thing too. You see the one back here. And then the one over here, just like that. So that way um, they will continue to grow without regressing in uh, growth rate too much. Because if I was to cut off, say, you know, this whole top here, it might take a little while for the plants to recover and that would slow down this whole production because I'd have to wait longer for them to start growing again. But doing just this here, this should, uh, shouldn't hinder their growth rate too much. All right, it turns out this algae is starting to become a problem. Not so much yet, but it will soon. See, it's green in there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up a hydrogen peroxide solution and uh, try to take care of this here. Um, it's obviously not really affecting the plants yet, but if it gets worse, it could. Um, also, I wanted to mention that this is my fault because normally I, I would be blocking the light out. Like, there's some amount of light that can actually get through this styrofoam here. And uh, these containers here are also not completely uh, opaque. So light does get through here as well. It's not a lot, but it's just enough to actually cause the algae to grow. This is one of those rules that I broke that I just, I guess I was trying to see how much I can get away with. And obviously it's, it's causing a problem. If, there was, if this was completely light sealed, there wouldn't be any algae growing in there. So what I'm gonna do here is I got some 3% hydrogen peroxide. Um, I got about eight gallons between those two containers and I wanna use about um, three teaspoons per gallon. So what I'm gonna do, uh, when I combine all that together, it's about four ounces. So I'm gonna mix four ounces of hydrogen peroxide in this here. I will be putting it in the sprayer and then just filling it up to uh, whatever amount here to, so I can split it between both of those containers so it's equal. All right, this is my pressurized sprayer. I really love this thing. This is good for multiple purposes here. Um, so I'm just gonna spray these roots in here kind of like this. I have this set to mist mode basically, just like that. I'm gonna spray all of those roots in there, um, coat the surface of the water and everything, and then uh, I'll dump the rest in there. So I'm gonna do that one, I'll spray everything, and then I'll do this one, I'll spray everything to equal amounts, and then I will dump out the rest of the solution in, in equal amounts between these two containers. All right, so it's all sprayed and added to the solution. This one over here doesn't really have a whole lot in there. There's some growing on the roots there, which everything's been completely sprayed, both sides, every side. Um, the reason why this one over here has a little more is simply because, well, it has more nitrogen in that solution. Um, but we'll come back and check on it in a, in a couple days here and see if it actually regressed. All right, it's been three days since I used the hydrogen peroxide solution on the plant roots here. And you can see that it looks pretty good. So there is a, there's not really a whole lot of uh, suspended algae in the solution. There's a little bit of greenness to the roots, I guess. Um, it actually looks more natural than anything else. And I'm not sure if that's actually all algae. And I think if it was, it would show up in the water more. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that those roots are kind of the color they should be. And you can see more of the same over here. Now you saw before how these roots were, were more green. There was more green on the roots and now they look pretty much just like the other one. Um, the solution looks real good. There's not really anything floating on the surface like there was before. There might be a little bit of residual around the edges you see. And then there is what appears to be some algae in the bottom, uh, but there's nothing really in suspension. And the stuff in the bottom, I'm not really sure if that's actually living or, or, or not, or if it's slowly dying back. You can see there's little white spots in there, it might be regressing. But anyways, yeah, you can clearly see, you know, I'm not really sure if it shows up in the video too well, but the roots look great. Um, those look like a natural color to me. Now, when I've grown pepper plants before, I can't really say that I've seen the roots be that, be green like that, but this is a different type of pepper, so uh, it could just be that. Anyways, the plants are growing just fine, and what I've actually noticed here is that the way this is working out, as far as the way they're growing, looks to be pretty fair at this point. There's a, this plant here in the front, as I pointed out a while ago in this video, was 
a little smaller than the rest, which I already explained why. Now, but if you look here in the back, this one in the back here is also smaller now. So you can see clearly, almost clearly, that that plant in the back and this plant up front are almost, or I would say they're basically the same size. And then this plant here in the front and this one in the back over here are pretty much the same size. So it's working out pretty well. And you can see how the roots, the root bundles here kind of correlate with that. So you can see the root bundle in the back is bigger than the one in the front, naturally because the plant size is different. And you should be able to maybe just barely be able to tell that on this one. So the one in the back there, it looks like it's a larger bundle, but they're kind of more spread out than the ones in the front. The one in the front are a little more dense. So I think that's it for this little update. Uh, we'll come back if anything changes or maybe when they start to produce peppers. All right, it's been three weeks since the last update here, and I have purposely not changed out these solutions in a little while because I wanted to see what would happen. So this was intentional. So I'm starting to see these deficiencies show up here, and I'm gonna talk about these in a second. Um, first off, if you go look over here, the plants on the left, this is just the um, Maxi Grow. There's not really a whole lot of bad stuff showing up. Uh, but there is some of these spots in the leaves, these brown spots, and I believe that is a manganese deficiency. Not a bit, not really a big deal. Um, you'll see the same thing over here in these plants, but I also saw some yellowing here. Now, typically you would think this is a nitrogen deficiency, and it, it could be because these actually are the oldest leaves. Uh, they're not the lowest on the plant, but they are the oldest leaves, and these leaves here down uh, underneath, these are the new ones growing out, uh, that are branching out from below. Uh, so it's, I don't believe it's a nitrogen deficiency, even though this does have less nitrogen. This is more showing up as a potassium deficiency. And that makes sense because this is the mix, the Maxi Grow, the Maxi Bloom, which averages down that number. At the end, it's a 15. Uh, so this is getting 15% uh, and this is would be getting about 7.5%. Uh, uh, so it does have less potassium, so that kind of makes sense. And there is also less nitrogen by a little bit as well, uh, uh, about half as much, I believe. I, I can't remember offhand, but anyways, it doesn't really matter. I wanted to show that, uh, kind of what they're looking like. And also, the roots, everything looks really good in here. The roots look pretty health, really healthy, actually. And the green you see there on those roots, that's not algae. Uh, I think I've already said it before in this video, that is the reason those are green is actually because there's a little bit of light getting inside the container there, and they're just, um, well, they're kind of like photosynthesis, photosynthesizing, I guess, or really just a reaction to light. If they were deep in the ground, they may not look green, or they might, but that's kind of what I'm attributing it to is just the, the light that's getting in there. But I could be wrong about that. I'm just saying that it's not algae. Um, same thing over here in these. And the root systems look about the same, same size, same bulk, filled the same weight, the plant sizes are all roughly the same size. So as of right now, all I'm really seeing here as far as the differences go is just the deficiency showing up, and that mostly was intentional. So I'm gonna keep up with the uh, uh, sol uh, solution changes here just to see uh, if we can just keep these plants growing about the same rate uh, through the rest of this grow and when they start producing their peppers. Well, it has been exactly one month to the day since the last segment of this video, and I've been kind of refraining from doing any kind of updates until there was something notable to talk about. And it might be a little bit difficult to see in the video, but I can kind of see, uh, especially in person, that the plants here on the left that's using the Maxi Grow are a little bit greener than the ones on the right here, which is a mix of Maxi Grow and Maxi Bloom. Um, that is the biggest change right now. Other than that, they are growing at roughly the same rate and they're all about the same size. Um, even the plants in the back, you can see it's got one tall portion on both sides and the back side of those is shorter. They're uh, basically identical. Same thing with the ones in the front, they're almost identical looking other than the color. Uh, as far as the buds go, uh, they all have buds growing, quite a bit of them and there is no difference between all the plants here uh, on the right versus the ones on the left, they're all the same. Uh, the root systems are all roughly the same. You can see in there, and again, you can see the white on the roots. That's not mold for those of you who don't grow in hydroponics, that's air roots, uh, since it isn't a cranky method. You can see the same thing over here on this side. 
everything was looking pretty good and mostly healthy. Obviously got some leaf die off here, uh, which is pretty normal. And uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and update this when it starts to actually produce the peppers, although it's been quite a while. This is taking a very long time to uh, get to that point. So we'll come back probably when that happens unless something else major changes. All right, it's been one month to the day since the last segment of this video and things are very slow growing here and that's mainly because the temperature in my basement is uh, it's not very warm. Well, it's not very warm to grow these particular plants anyway. So the growing is just taking a little bit longer. I think this is probably one of my longest grows ever to complete anyways. And the main difference here since the last update is we got lots of flowers growing all over the place on both sides here. So the maxi grow and the maxi blue and mangrove mixed together. Um, on the left here with the maxi grow, with just the maxi grow, uh, the plants are still much larger than the plants over here on the right. It's kind of harder to see, but there's a plant in the back uh, that is much smaller than this plant in the front to where the plant in the back over there on the maxi grow side is almost as big as the one in the front here. Um, this plant over here in the front is it is a little bit smaller than both the plants here on the left. It's not by much, but there is a difference. Um, yeah, so anyways, uh, lots of flowers growing on both sides. There's no difference in the flowers at all. I wouldn't expect that to be any different anyways. Um, we are getting the pepper starting to grow here, as you can see, very small. Uh, and there's just as many growing over here on the left side in the maxi grow, uh, plenty growing all up in there. So those just started growing, I think in the past two weeks. Um, it is obviously going to take a little bit longer for those to complete growing. As far as what I've been doing with the nutrient change out, um, I started using a, a mixture of, uh, well, a solution of 10 grams per gallon of solution, so 10 grams of the powder. So I put 10 grams up per gallon of the Maxi Grow and then 5 grams of Maxi Grow and 5 grams of Maxi Bloom uh, for the containers here on the right hand side. So that's the mixture I just started converting to uh, just because it started producing some peppers, so I'm giving them a little bit of extra feed. And um, I also raised up this light here, and I, I had it down about here-ish, and I had the light uh, intensity turned down to about 50% or so, which was putting about five or 600 micromoles of light uh, on the plant tops here. So I, what I decided to do, and I can actually feel it here right now, I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, I decided to increase the intensity of this light, not so much because it wasn't getting enough intensity, but because I wanted to actually benefit from a little more heat output or a little bit of radiant heat output as well. Uh, so right now, this is not running at full power. I have it turned down just a little bit and I'll show you that. These lights here uh, are actually pretty intense for strip lights. And I, this is one of the reasons I really like this particular model. Um, and you, as I've said before in other videos, you can see here how the middle has less LEDs and it tapers out to more at the end. And that is just to give a much better even coverage. And because this is a strip light and the light is spread out uh, further over the surface area of the, you know, the entire plant tops here, um, it gives a really nice even distribution. But when they're really close, because of the gaps in the lights here, you don't get quite as even a distribution. It's, it's not bad, but when you raise it up, it's actually a lot better. Um, so when I have this actually at full intensity all the way up at that distance, I'm getting a thousand micromole at these plant tops and that's getting to be a little bit too intense uh, for this. So I actually have it turned down just a little bit and I'll show you what that is. That's actually saving a little bit of energy anyways. Um, so you can see here, here's where the dial is. So we're probably about 80% or so of max. So that's saving a little bit of a energy costs and I mean, it's not, not a whole lot. I mean, we're talking probably pennies difference in electrical costs, but still it saves a little bit and it's not running at full power, which makes the lights last longer. So anyways, yeah, there is a little bit of radiant heat coming off of these. I can feel it right here. And even down here, it's just a little bit. It doesn't need to be a lot. It's not like you're trying to heat a, a human body up. So it, right here, I'm feeling a little bit of radiant heat and that's over time giving the plants a little bit more heat energy and I think that's going to help accelerate the grow a little bit better. I probably should have done that to begin with but this grow has been taking so long um, I, I don't I don't really know if it was even really worth doing that because I'm not sure if it's going to increase the growth. Like the whole inside of this area really needs to be warm not just the tops of the plants and the main issue is that you know I have vents on either side here for even 
flow distribution. Uh, and so there's air being sucked in here constantly and sucked out. So it's going to be really hard to maintain a warmer temperature. It's really only the plant tops that are going to be seeing the warmer, um, uh, warmer air. Not well, not air, but the the heat. Everything else underneath is just getting basically cooled by the air coming in from the inflow. And I do not feel like actually, um, I don't feel like actually heating my basement or any kind of room just to grow these plants. It's just not worth it for me. It's just going to take a little bit longer to get this uh, experiment complete. So that's it for this update, a little bit longer, um, but I just wanted to cover a couple of the details. As you can see here, there's plenty of leaves and everything. Before I go here, uh, lots of leaf drop. That's basically self pruning. So all the leaves underneath here that were getting hardly any light whatsoever, they've been dropping off. Uh, so that's saving me some effort. So the plant's just doing what it needs to do by itself. I don't gotta do it uh, for it. But yeah, all the leaves underneath there you can see that they pretty much all fell off, so pretty much all the leaves that are uh, getting the light are the ones that are staying there. Everything else underneath fell off. So there's no really, there's not really any reason to clean all it up. I'm just going to leave it there until everything's finished. Uh, it's not going to fall down inside the containers anyways. It's all pretty much sealed at this point. All right, so we'll come back probably when these peppers are maybe ready to pick unless something else happens. All right, it's been two and a half weeks since the last update, and these peppers are now ripening. Um, looks like here on the right hand side with the maxi grow and maxi bloom mix um, it seems like there's a lot more uh, ripening on these or at least turning red uh, versus the ones in just the uh, maxi grow uh, there's there's quite a few here but it, i don't know maybe it's just because the leaves are more sparse on these um, plants are still looking pretty good here uh, i'm really surprised that these peppers did, did not get bigger that's the size of it. That's, that's one of the bigger ones. And you got a little baby one over here. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to taste a red one and a green one from each set of plants. I don't want to do that because I think it's going to be pretty hot. Maybe it won't be. I don't know. That's the whole point. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these and then we'll taste them. Today is the day I finally get to taste some Carolina Reaper peppers. Now, I've never tasted any peppers that were that are, are supposed to be as hot as this. Um, I think the hottest ones I've had were the uh, Thai peppers that I grew uh, a couple years ago, maybe. Um, anyways, I picked a couple of these peppers. Peter, that's like one of those what, fairy tale rhymes or whatever. Peter picked a peck of pickled peppers. I don't, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so here's, these are very small. I, I don't wanna, I'm, I'm not trying to like, you know, do any, make any records here. This, I just wanna try a, a small piece. So these are the, these little tiny ones. This is from the uh, Maxi Grow, Maxi Bloom mix. And then the ones over here I picked, try to get the same size and the same look. Um, this one's from just from the Maxi Grow. So I'm gonna start with the green peppers. I'm only gonna take a small bite because if it's if this is too hot, I'm not really gonna be able to tell any difference in flavor. It's just gonna taste like spice, basically. So, all right, here we go. Take a little bite of this uh, green Carolina Reaper grown in the Maxi, uh, Maxi Grow, Maxi Bloom mix. Yep. Wow. Oh. Oh. No. Oh boy. Uh, <clears throat> I'm not acting at all right now. I know some people have seen my videos before. I've done some acting in them. I'm not acting. This is like 10 minutes later. And all I took was this teeny teeny tiny little bite of this thing. I was not expecting that kind of uh, pain. <clears throat> I have a whole new appreciation for uh, some people who eat these things in competitions. I don't even want to touch anything like with my hands, I just touched those. I thought I was gonna go into shock, I'm serious. It's still hot and it's still bothering me, but I had, uh, I was salivating so much. I'm not going to describe it for you guys. I'm not going to taste these because this is nothing more than pain in a pill, basically. That's all that is. There, it just tastes like a, a green pepper with 
so much heat to it that it's dangerous. I mean, it, it is. If I was to eat this whole thing, even though it's this tiny, if I was to eat that whole thing, I'd probably be in, be in the hospital. Um, I've never tasted anything that hot. I like spicy foods, but this, this is not fun at all. There is zero pleasure in that. If you really, really want to uh, play a, a really dangerous prank on somebody, this would be what you would do when you put in their food. Don't do that. Do not do this. This is not funny. This is not a prank. Don't put this in anyone's food. Uh, this this here can seriously. I thought I, I was I was on the I was on the verge of having like a, a a panic attack. I don't mean the kind of panic attack where you where you faint. I'm talking about like the where like it feels like you're gonna have a heart attack or something. Like I thought I was gonna go into shock because as soon as it, um, <clears throat> As soon as I went in my mouth, like my mouth, I can handle the heat like in, in the mouth area, but went in the back of the throat, that's, that was, that's terrible. That's just awful. So these are going into the compost. That, that's over with. Um, I guarantee you they're all going to be the same thing, and I, I don't, I'm not going to have any volunteers that taste them for me, and I'm not going to do it. So just take my word, word for it. My mouth is almost going numb right now, by the way like my tongue and everything. I've, I've never experienced anything like that. Um, so I'm gonna come back in this video here and I'm going to, we're gonna look at how many peppers the plants produced. I'll kind of put them all in next to each other on a, on a, on a table or something or a countertop and we'll kind of, kind of take a look at how many they made, the size of them and um, how many are actually like green and red. So far it's actually looking like the mixed nutrients actually do a little bit better but we gotta look at kind of the whole picture. So I'll come back and we'll take a look at that. I'm never doing that again. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and pick these now. We're gonna go ahead and uh, count them and just look at them in general. Before I do that, I wanted to show the plants here. I'm not gonna spread these plants out on my bench or table or anything. I just wanna show them as they are. Um, so the Maxi Bloom, Maxi Grow mix, this one plant in the front here has most of the uh, most of the peppers. And then there's this one plant in the back that's a little bit smaller. It's kind of hard to see on video really, but let's see if I can pull this away because these are kind of interlocked together. There we go. So this plant here, it's narrow. Like it's, you can see it looks wide like this, <clears throat> but if you look down at the top, it's, it's kind of like this to where this plant over here is like this. So that's a, a smaller plant, but both of these plants here in the Maxi Grow are both larger. So you got this one larger one here, and then you still got this larger one in the back there. Um, so obviously with the Maxi Grow, with more nitrogen, you would expect to have bigger plants. That's how it's always been in any kind of plant I've ever grown. Um, but the difference here is, and this is the this is kind of the, the shocker to me, and I'm pretty sure that this one plant over here, with me, the addition of, I guess, the one smaller one in the back, but most of the peppers on this front plant, with, the, with just this one plant here in the Maxi Grow, Maxi Bloom mix, I think has more peppers than the both the plants combined in the Maxi Grow. We're going to take a look at that and see if that's true. All right, here is the pickings. The clear winner here was the Maxi Bloom, Maxi Grow mix with 137 total peppers. And over here in the Maxi Grow was a total of 98. That's between the two plants on one side and two plants on the other. Um, the one plant in the front that I was talking about before uh, did not have more peppers than both of the plants combined uh, over in the Maxi Grow. But combining both the plants in the Maxi Grow Maxi Bloom mix uh, is obviously more than the, just the Maxi Grow. This is the only situation in all the experiments I've done with growing different plants that there's actually a more uh, uh, more produce that came out of this using the Maxi Grow uh, and Maxi Bloom together. Uh, well, this is the only time I've actually combined them together, but in all the other situations where I just use Maxi Bloom the whole time versus just using Maxi Grow the whole time, the Maxi Grow always win, uh, and it was it was it was a clear win. Uh, now, even in the previous experiment I've done with the jalapeno peppers. Uh, I actually grew far more peppers on the just growing Maxi Grow the whole time versus just growing Maxi Bloom. And I believe this is this is all attributed to just the amount of nitrogen. So 
if you keep putting more nitrogen into the plants, they're going to produce more foliage versus producing more, well, produce, and in some cases, flowers. However, I did another video series, it might have been actually part of this video series, where I grew flowers specifically, and still the maxi grow grew far more flowers than the maxi bloom alone. So it's very dependent on the type of plant that you're growing. Uh, but in most cases, maxi grow alone is great for just general purpose growing. It's not like I didn't get any peppers, I just got less. Uh, and I, I don't know if I've said this already, but if I had probably had grown the or the uh, all these Carolina Reapers and just maxi bloom the whole time, it probably wouldn't have been as good of a yield because uh, the plants would have been probably substantially smaller. Because if you're giving them too little nitrogen through the whole time, the plants are just not going to grow very well. And because it's a smaller plant, they're going to have less uh, less yield. So in this case, I think uh, it worked out. But I think for me, for most cases, I'm just going to use the Maxi Grow going forward. Even though it produced less here, uh, I may just I may just taper back how much nutrients I give it. But anyways, I am not going to be tasting any more of these. I don't know what I'm going to do with these peppers here because I don't think anyone even wants to put, a, put them anywhere near their mouths because this, these, this stuff is dangerous. And I'm not joking about that. This, that's not a joke. This, this is very dangerous here. Certain people could probably go into uh, anaphylactic shock or something like that by eating these. This causes an, an incredible amount of pain uh, in parts of your body that you just are, you just don't want it in. So your throat, esophagus, where you're breathing and everything, uh, that can be a real problem. So I recommend whoever wants to grow these and has never tried growing uh, the Carolina Reapers before, I would say don't bother doing it because you will take one bite of one of these. Unless you're the kind of person who likes super, super spicy stuff or wants to do it in some sort of competition or, or uh, something like that or a challenge, something like that, that's different. But don't grow these just to try to taste them because you're not going to want to eat them at all. Uh, so right now, I don't know what I'm going to do with these. But as you can see, I've got actually a couple of almost normal-sized Carolina Reapers. These started growing later on. Uh, <clears throat> so these are actually light compared to something like this. I think that this, like even just these two peppers here, or maybe this one, this pepper here actually in weight feels like it's almost the same weight as this pepper here. Um, this one might be just slightly heavier. So I think a lot of the stuff has actually been um, compacted. So like there's not really anything hollow in here. So it hasn't really spread out and opened up into a hollow chamber, but it's the same amount of mass uh, because in here I can tell this is mostly just hollow. So I think the, I think these might actually just be super concentrated really because I, I don't know who anyone, I don't know how anyone can even eat a full size one of these in a competition. Because even just taking a small bite of something that was this small, if uh, you know a third of that was enough to freak me out. And as said, as I've said before, the, I have eaten plenty of spicy foods in my life. I, I like spicy foods, uh, and I've eaten plenty of jalapeno peppers. They don't bother me whatsoever. Uh, you know, I like it. Once I get up to the, I think a jalapeno pepper is like twenty thousand Scoville units. Once you get up to the uh, chili pepper, the Thai pepper, you're talking 100,000 Scoville units, and that's kind of pushing my boundaries a little bit, although, you know, I, I can definitely um, eat those. These here, on the other hand, you're talking about, what is it, over a million or something like that? Scoville units, it's, it, is, it is absolutely much different than any of the peppers you've ever tried before if you haven't ever tried anything hot, like really hot, I mean. So... After that long discussion there, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was probably a very long video by this point. This took me a really long time to grow. I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna put it right up here on the screen how long I actually took to grow this or to, to do this, to do this whole experiment from start to finish. So it just it feels like it took a really long time. If I had to guess, it's been like six months or something like that. Anyways, that's it for this video. There'll be more to come sometime in the future. Thanks for watching.